doing this quick video to help out someone. Um, I had a conversation last night with somebody who has who's, who's been having issues uh, being pulled back to church. And obviously we understand the pull um, to want to serve God, but we want to do it all in righteousness. So here's some scripture. This is out of the second book of Maccabees. This is chapter six. You see the precepts right there alongside Deuteronomy 32 and 7 and Job 8 and 8. I'll read this pretty quick. Not long after the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter, Olympias, that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwell in the palace or place, excuse me. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. The altar also was filled with profane things, which the law forbiddeth, forbiddeth. Excuse me. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient feast, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. And in that day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought in bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices when the feast of Bacchus was kept Christmas, seven days prior to. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen, by the suggestion of who? Ptolemy. This is before Constantine against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have the present misery. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom then had openly led around about the city. The babes hanging at their breasts, cast them down headlong from the wall. And others that had run together into caves, listened closely, nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, being discovered to Philip, were all burnt together, because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. For it is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but forthwith punish. For not as with other nations whom the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish, till they become to the fullness of their sins. So dealeth he with us. So with that, I want to show you something. I am from Baltimore. So Cardinal Gibbons is not just a school, but people really follow after that. I'm going to read this quote. And you can find it on Google. The Saturday is the seventh day, according to the Bible. And, ten, and the Ten Commandments was the question. Cardinal Gibbon says, I answer yes. It's Sunday, the first day of the week. And did the church change the seventh day, Saturday, for Sunday, the first day? I answer yes. Did Christ change the day? I answer no. Faithfully yours, J. Cardinal Gibbons, or James Cardinal Gibbons, Archbishop, Baltimore, Maryland, 1877 to 1921. And the question was, how prove you that the church hath power to command feast and holy days? And to that, I'm not going to read the scripture, 
but I will send you to Daniel's seven and twenty five. Now, Exodus 31 and 13, what does it say? The sign of the Sabbath. And the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites surely to keep my Sabbaths, for they will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come so that they may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Keep the Sabbath. For it is holy to you. Now I say this to you. Because now. We're just going to go. To yet one more verse. This is Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusions of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. For this is. The whole duty of. Of man. Now, if the church who just told you they changed the Sabbath day also are the ones that told you that the laws of God are done away with, who's in apostasy? The church or the people keeping the laws of God? You got a decision to make. If you're going to follow man, follow the man that came in the flesh to give you his righteous example. That is none other than your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, also known as Yahashua, Hamashiach, Yahawashai, many different names. But he is the son, the only begotten son of the father. And he gave us commandments that were of the father. And those are the commandments we ought to follow. The fourth commandment of the father. Keep his Sabbath day. Why does it always repeat it? Five to seven scriptures along with it, because it's that important. If you aren't keeping the Sabbath day of the most high. He can't call you his. And even your prayers are an abomination to him. Come out of her, my people. Be not partakers of her plagues. Babylon is fallen. Shalom.